So today we're going to be look at looking at massaging the neck. Again, this is my video from 2003. It might have even been filmed in 2002, published in 2003. Um, so here we're going to stretch the neck up using our stomach. We can also use the palms of our hands to hold it. Uh, and this gives us a nice stretch to really get into the back of the neck. We're working on the muscles beside the spine. Coming right up into where those muscles join the skull. Just working, cross-fibering them, crossing, crossing, crossing. Does, uh, if you've got a nice padded tummy like I was starting to get back then, it means that it's all tax deductible to all the food you eat because it uh, makes the cushioning better for the person's head. That was a joke, by the way, in case somebody didn't realize. Um, but yeah, anyway, I used to make that joke a lot. Here we're just turning the head to the side and then we can get into stretching the shoulder and working another great way just to get into the back of the neck. A lot of getting into the neck means it's about opening it up so you can get access to it. And there are different bands, which I was obviously starting to figure out back then, but hadn't completely figured out a whole lot of bands come through the neck. Some from the arms, which are on the sides where I'm working now, but some from the back, the big toe sacrum band, the Achilles band, they all come up through the area I'm working now. This area, when it's tight, can cause a lot of people to have headaches or um, vision problems, all sorts of stuff, because we've got a lot of the nerves coming from the spine into the skull there. So it's a nice area just to free up. Working across the shoulders, turning the head to the other side. And again, getting right up into where the skull meets. Even lifting up the shoulder a bit, getting in behind there. A lot of tension coming up say, from the arms into the side of the neck. So bands that I would now call like your outer thumb band, your outer wrist band, your upper little finger band, all coming in through there. Right across the top of the shoulders. So we can work across and right up into the base of the skull. So much tension people hold in their necks. We even have tension coming right up into the throat, into the thyroid area there. You have to work very gently there. Uh, but it can, uh, yeah, affect uh, activities of the thyroid through there with tension. Also, it's the throat chakra area in the Ayurveda, so sometimes people who aren't speaking enough, up enough of their truth might be blocked in there. Now we're going to do a gentle traction move of the neck, so holding below the skull and in front of the chin and away from the throat. Never, you want to put your pressure on the throat because it'll make it that people can't breathe. So and we're just pulling backward there, just providing that traction on the vertebrae. Opening them up, giving them space. A lot of people have their uh, neck is kind of condensed. This makes actually people look taller sometimes as well. And then after we've done that, of course, we can get right back into all those muscles. That was a bird talking to me. And again, just massaging, so stretching, massaging, opening up. You can actually see his neck starting to loosen up and look a bit softer. So the neck is like the tip of the iceberg and the tension is coming from the feet and the arms all the way up into the neck. <coughs> now we're going to look at the face and head. This is a really important area. A lot of people get tension right around the 
eyebrows, but it's actually a band of tension that's underneath the eyebrows. It's not the eyebrows themselves. And it continues right around into the bridge of the nose. So we're finding a spot and working that tension along the face. Again, finding that tight spot there, bringing that tension away. Again, in Ayurveda, that area is called the third eye chakra. A lot of people get a lot of congestion there, a lot too much thinking, too much analytical thinking. I find sometimes people even get vertical lines, either one or two or three, up through that area. And I always find that's a symptom of too much analytical thinking and when we open that up a person can be just calm and see things as they are rather than analyzing them. Here we're coming right up into the jaw around the sinuses and into that TMJ point. Holding in there. Not so good to open up their jaw. Yeah, you can open the jaw and where the muscles and up the jaw join the skull it's called the temporomandibular joint and work through there right up into the side into the gums people hold a lot of tension in here for teeth grinding and different things can be totally affected or by this tension and come right into the chin still use all these moves actually generally just work in one direction which is towards the chin I don't come back with much pressure again getting right into the sinuses this will clear out a lot of sinus congestion if it if somebody does have sinus congestion it'll be very sore yeah. working into the chin again all through the temporomandibular joint Sorry, I'm not speaking too loud because I've got the baby asleep in the other room. Yeah, but we're working right up into the jaw here. Ears, squeezing, pulling. With elderly people's ears, sometimes they can be very dry, and I have seen a couple of people's ears just bleed by, by doing this, so just be a bit careful with dry elderly ears. Now working across the forehead. So coming up from that third eye area and coming up in increasingly higher lines across the forehead. Now, this can only be done like this as long as there's a little bit of moisture, a bit of oil on the skin. Not, not that you're putting oil on your hands because you've got to be careful about oil on the head, but if not, you would do it point on, point off like a shiatsu. So pressure on, take, move your hand, pressure off. Now I'm working up into the scalp. And again, feeling little bumps. Most people have a bunch of bumps right above their ears there. And these can, uh, when, get, when they get really bumpy, they can be where headaches are. So we're just trying to move them along. And we're, what we're doing is we're holding the scalp and moving the scalp across the skull. So we're not um, actually taking our fingers off we're just moving it especially for people with hair for people without hair you can actually slide around the skull as long as there's a little bit of oil or grease or whatever here I'm doing a really important spot I'm just working it there's a technique I use actually I'm not sure if I'm going to demonstrate in this one or not I've forgotten but it's a powerful move to go right into the head so you're just getting right into that scalp, and loosening up the tension. Feels good just watching it. ASMR, I guess, is what people use. Autonomic sensory motor response, I think, is the term. I'd never even heard of that until a couple of years ago. So pressure is, this is a shiatsu move, actually. Um, and we're doing pressure down either side of the midline of the skull, just leaning in with our body weight. It feels quite different if you push in with your hands rather than leaning in with your body weight. Getting into the scalp, different places, just moving it side to side. You can see he's starting to look more relaxed.
This is a great way we're holding that point I was talking about, right? Where the eyebrow turns into the nose and then we're working and we're stretching that while working into around the uh, sinuses and up into the jaw. Facial massage is quite an interesting art actually because there's certain points, certain areas that are very, very powerful. In acupuncture, we've got all sorts of pressure points and acupuncture points going through the face and head. Again, you'd only want to do stuff like that with a bit of oil or that sort of thing. Or like natural oil, I mean, because some people have dry skin, some people have more oily skin. Dry skin people, they'll pull the skin. Here we're just gently pulling the hair. It feels quite nice from what I've been told. <laughs> mm. Don't know what I'm explaining right now. I have to think about that. Yeah, what I used to do when I first started massaging for the first 10 years, I always used to do a head massage at the end. That's how I was taught, and that's how I did it. And even here, I'm doing it at the end. This is now coming to the conclusion of the video in a few minutes um, of the whole series. But what I found is later is that people are in such a nice, relaxed space after doing a head massage. I started to do it at the start as well. And then people could let go a lot easier. Otherwise, people's minds are tight. You know, minds are uh, control, what I would call controlling or hard for them just to settle in and do a deep breathing. Whereas if you do a head massage at the start, then you actually get a person into a relaxed space. And I think I figured that out shortly after uh, this time. I really emphasize it now. So yeah, I always start a massage with a head massage pretty much now, as well as finish it. It's nice to finish it as well. But you can actually do a head massage in the middle of a treatment too, especially if you're stirring up a lot of energy. Um, so as we finish too, I like to sort of bring people's awareness uh, back through their whole body. And this is a technique called raking the Wei Chi. Uh, the Wei Chi, which is spelled W-E-I and then Chi, C-H-I. It's a Chinese medical term for like kind of life energy that extends out of the body. It's directly related to the immune system as well. So they call it raking the Wei Chi. And then keeping the person, we want to keep the person nice and warm when we finish because people can get quite cold, especially keep their feet warm, keep their body warm, depending upon obviously the room temperature. But and then after we've calmed their mind down, we're bringing our energy to their belly and bringing their awareness back into their belly. I actually even do things now, like as I'm, when I'm finishing a massage, clicking the toes and, and bringing awareness to the feet as well. And then, uh, I don't know what I'm explaining there. And now, just as we're about to finish up this series, we're just going to show you a few different postures. So um, here I'm showing basically coming from your legs. So, you know, use the whole body when you're massaging, not just your shoulders, but you got your most powerful muscles in your body are in your legs. So, so push forward with your back leg to get those uh, movements happening. It's always better, like when I learned Shiatsu, we were always taught to come from our hara, which is our belly, and our life energy in there, our chi. And the same with here, we can use different elbow moves, but we use, the strength shouldn't be just in your shoulder, it should actually be from your back leg, and you're pushing from your leg, you're going to get way more strength, and it's going to be less taxing on your body as well to do this. So just you know, lean in. And you can like move the leg back and forth. You can see he's feeling that. That's what his head popping up means. Thank you, Brandon. I can really feel that. And again, I'm not exerting myself too much, but he's definitely he's definitely feeling the effects of that in his hip. So it's a lot of it's about finding angles, using body weight, and, uh, and then just getting in there. Well, thanks for watching this series, and uh, it's been fun going over some of the stuff from 17 years ago because it's 2020 right now. Um, and uh, I hope you continue watching our videos. And, uh, you know, we have an online course, too, that you might be interested in. 
Um, it's more updated because I've done a lot of stuff in those last 17 years, traveling the world, teaching, and figuring more and more stuff out. I've had to find and get rid of tension. So once again, thanks for watching our videos. Please subscribe to our channel, and uh, we look forward to seeing you again. Please, uh, if you have any questions, just put them down at the bottom.